missed so many days of school because my mom's boyfriend was beating her up a lot. So I fake sick so I could stay home and try to protect her. When I was in sixth grade, I told my dad I hoped he died that day. The thing is, he did die that day of a heart attack while I was at school. And now when my mom's mad at me, she says, you're not going to kill me like you did your dad. I got jumped a few months back. And these kids, they had a chain around my neck. And I just knew that I was going to die. But now those kids in that gang, they're at my school. And I'm scared to go back because I just know they're going to get me again. Well, I, I, I had to leave my childhood behind me a long time ago. As a school social worker and somebody who grew up about a mile around the corner in the old West Greenville, I have experience with these stories on a personal and a professional level. In fact, those were quotes from some of the students that I have the privilege of working with on a daily basis. Those kids and their stories are why I fight like hell every day to try to make sure we can do everything we can to keep them in school versus taking our chances with them out on the street. Mis niños son la sangre de mi corazón. I would stand here today and argue with you that it is our professional duty and our ethical duty to make sure we do everything we can to quit suspending kids for nonviolent infractions. All right? We know that a lot of our students are growing up in traumatic environments, in bad neighborhoods and bad homes. And this causes them tre tremendous problems when it comes to their ability to feel valued and to feel safe. So what you may look at a kid and you see, well, that's an oppositional kid. That's a defiant kid. Somebody else, they might see an abuse survivor acting in self-preservation. So what that can turn into is just maybe sometimes when we kick kids out of school for disrespect or disrupting schools, we may be actually punishing protective biological responses that are colliding with a classroom environment that we have not equipped to handle that. Churchill said, a man does what he must in spite of personal consequences and obstacles and dangers and pressures. And that is the basis for human morality. So in that spirit, I'm here today to argue that we must stop suspending kids for benign things. And I'm going to tell you why. But first, before I go forward, I want to mention two things. First, it's important to note that when I refer to suspensions, I'm talking about out-of-school suspensions. And secondly, we obviously have to keep our, our schools safe. No debate. I'm not here to advocate that we excuse kids bringing weapons to school. I'm talking about nonviolent things like my student who last month got suspended five days out of school for having a cell phone in class. So what's the big deal about suspensions? Here's some things that they've been shown to do. They don't engage our parents. They're, te they're seriously not making our schools safer. They don't even stop the behaviors that we're trying to stop. 30 to 50% of all suspensions in America right now are repeat behaviors. They're not bringing our test scores up, and if I hadn't got you yet, they don't even make sense financially. Because right now, we're spending over $100,000 per year to keep a kid locked up. So what are some things suspensions will do for us? They will make sure, or let's say they will highly increase the chances that that student will be held back at least one grade. All right? They marginalize students who are already at risk, students who are black and brown, LGBTQ, and students with disabilities. A little while back, I was on a home visit seeing one of my, one of my favorite kids. They're all my favorite, but he's one of my favorites. And he was serving a very long susp suspension for something in my eyes that was silly. And this kid looks at me with tears running down his eyes. And he says, Mr. TJ, on top of all this school stuff, I just have a lot on my chest right now, man. I just came out to my mom as bisexual. She just told me I was a faggot and told me I just should go back in the closet. Suspension increases the chance that a student will end up involved with the juvenile justice system. 
And right now, suspension is the number one factor, the number one predictor that a kid will end up dropping out of high school. On this slide, you're going to see some public agencies that are openly opposed to out-of-school suspensions. As one educator put it, to me as the adult, suspension is something so unprovoked, something so outside of the norm, that I as the adult had no other option. Yet right now, according to the Department of Education, we nationally are suspending almost 4 million kids every year. 3 million for nonviolent offenses. Now, I'm sure you're thinking it's just a bunch of punk teenagers. In your head, imagine, I'm sure everybody in here knows an elementary school age student. Picture one. Now, fill up the wellness arena with that kid. Because last year, just in this state, we suspended over 17,000 elementary school kids. In 2014, the United States of America suspended over 5,000 preschool kids. So, I know what you're thinking. If they're so bad, why are we doing them? The simple answer is, it's an easy way out. But it's not that easy. I work with schools and speak at schools quite often. I have some educator friends in the house today. And I always lead with one question. What's your primary goal as an educator? All right. And you think you can guess? It's not test scores. It's not graduation rates. It's not, I'm trying to make it to summer break. Overwhelmingly. These teachers and administrators and coaches and everybody at these schools tell me it's my goal to try to create better human beings. However, our schools are kind of boxed in the way of doing things right now. Because of outcomes measures, our teachers are all, a lot of times forced to teach to a test. Related arts programs and social emotional initiatives are on the back burner. We know that the brain is use dependent and it takes consistent, repetitive lessons to build skills like these. However, we a lot of times will wait till our kids are in trouble or that kid before we hit them with these one and done interventions that are supposed to create new behaviors. If you went your whole life without working out, you turn 17, 18, you're going to show up at a gym, and a personal trainer will be able to get you in shape looking like a model in a two-week session. But that's how we, tr we treat behavior change. Also, it is very important for me to note that we have to quit holding these kids to a higher standard than we are willing to live up to. Remember my kid that I mentioned earlier, five days, cell phone. Tell me you've never snuck in a text or an email during a work meeting. And you want to miss work without, fi without pay for five days? Guys, other countries are getting this concept. Insurance companies get this concept. Remember what happened to your car insurance when you turned 25? Think that was random? They understand that our brain's risk-reward regions are not fully developed until our mid-20s, yet under what we know about suspensions and the outcomes, we are quick to turn a stupid mistake made by an adolescent brain into a potentially life-altering punishment. It doesn't make sense. The good news is there's hope. And really, really briefly, I want to share with you a few options that are being used around the nation. Ideas that are increasing test scores, reducing disciplinary issues, reducing suspensions. But what I love the most is they align with the hearts of the teachers that I know and that I get to serve because they are helping us create better human beings. Restorative justice, or restorative practices, is nothing new. They're being used all around the country in schools of all levels. Restorative justice is a shift from a more traditional, punitive, zero-tolerance approach to something that is healing, it is community-based, and wait for it, it's designed to hold kids accountable for their actions and also teach new behaviors. The goal is to 
make them understand what they did, repair the harm, and hopefully in- decrease the risk for future reoffense. Restorative justice would argue that discipline is not something you do to a child. It is something you develop within a child. Mindfulness is not just a buzzword. It is an amazing concept, an amazing practice that is being embraced by schools like Robert W. Coleman Elementary School in inner city Baltimore. Robert W. Coleman, every morning and every afternoon, leads every student in a 15-minute mix of yoga and meditation where they're actually learning to breathe. Coleman also has a mindful room where students who need it can access this room and learn to resolve disputes in a healthy way and decompress and regulate emotions and enter the classroom again. After implementing practices such as these, Robert W. Coleman saw a two-year period with no suspensions. And lastly, right here in our backyard, we have an amazing initiative called On Track Greenville that is a partnership of United Way, Greenville Health System, Greenville County Schools, and several other community partners. On Track uses an early warning response system where we're able to identify middle school students who are already at risk for not graduating. Once identified, we can surround each student with community supports, professional supports, and whatever they need to get them back on track to graduate. Better human beings. That is one hell of a charge. Do I know exactly how to do that? No. (laughs) If I did, folks, there would be no need for this conversation. I know one thing. Suspending our kids is not the answer. The ideas that I've mentioned to you today are simply just the result of really good people like yourselves thinking outside the box and trying to keep our kids in school by doing whatever it takes. I would encourage you to please look into these ideas, be critical, make them better, Encourage your school boards and your school members to do the same. Above all, hold us accountable to do the job that we signed up to do. And that's to take your kids and make them better humans.